put the blame on the patients. He surmised that some people have certain genes that neutralize drugs. He did not realize the reason why these drugs do not work is due to one fact. They are not designed to quench patients' symptom-producing thirst. Unfortunately, these drugs go further than not working. They actually make patients sicker than before. In the past, when we were less arrogant in medical science, most health problems, which should be recognized as manifestations or complications of dehydration inside the cells of the body, were called diseases of unknown etiology. Today, these same diseases are being blamed on the genetic makeup of people. If only medical professionals would realize that the drought in the internal environment of cells in the body impacts the enzymatic activity of the DNA and RNA structures of the nucleus of the cells, too. Thus, most of the malfunction of these genes is secondary to the missing action of water in the interior of the cells. Water should be present in adequate quantities for these genes to efficiently perform their obligations within the physiological biochemical functions of the body. Genes are not cast iron structures. They have to be replicated from raw materials that are carried by water circulation in the body. Since the body, except for neurons that are one-time assets of the brain, remakes itself every so many weeks, every genetic abnormality that is seen in later years must be assumed to be initially the result of dehydration that became established some time before. The two previous editions of this book addressed the issue of dehydration as the primary cause of pain and disease in the human body. You are now aware that most drugs do not help patients. Indeed, these drugs can harm or even kill them. Now more than ever, the information in this book should become the guideline for people who do not wish to be poisoned to an early death by licensed and legally administered toxic drugs that are not designed to be thirst quenchers. After all, when the body needs water, nothing else will do. I only wish my colleagues in medical practice could realize this simple fact. The third edition has expanded in many places, including the chapter on the treatment protocol with water. When the first and second editions of the book were written, it was thought, keep it simple, stupid, should be applied to how and when water should be taken, and why a salt-free diet is bad for you. However, it became clear that individuals needed more information and reasoning in order to reverse a disease process. The original idea could not satisfy the needs of people who were already very sick and needed complementary information on the use of minerals and salt, diet, exercise, sunlight and mindset in disease reversal. These issues are now discussed in this book. This book also benefits from over ten years of feedback from people who cured their diseases using information I have written on water, a better medication than anything the drug industry has to offer. Introduction. Don't treat thirst with medications. The significant problems we have cannot be solved at the same level of thinking with which we created them. Albert Einstein. The cost of health care was around $1.6 trillion in 2002, and it is estimated it will consume 28% of the GNP by 2010 if present trends continue. About 90% of the amount is personal health care costs incurred by the public. The federal government is said to be responsible for only about 10% of expenditure. However, this vast expenditure becomes taxable income for the 10 million people employed at present in the health care system in America. It is clear that the government stands to gain from the rise in the health care costs of the nation. Thus, there exists a conflict of interest between the needs of the public and the intention of the government to preserve its income base. In light of this understanding, we can see why the government is not interested in taking steps to reduce the health care costs of the American people. It is obvious that the people are responsible for their own health. They have to protect themselves from commercial considerations of the health care operators and the government that wishes to maintain health care costs at their present levels. You see, the health care crisis of America is not caused by the way it is operated, nor is it entirely the result of greed-based pricing. It is caused by a mistake in the basic premise in the science of physiology that is the foundation of all medical and scientific knowledge of the human body. It is caused because the public and the professionals don't yet know when the human body is...